everybody. Awesome. So, Pete, if you would like to go ahead and, and call the meeting to order, and then um, I can do the roll call piece, and then I'll pass it off to you. Great. Um, thank you. Uh, this, good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. Um, would you like me to do the roll call, or, or is that Brian? Do you want to do the roll call? Right? Um, I can go ahead and do the roll call. I forgot to give that piece over to Brian, so I'll go ahead and take that piece. <clears throat> okay. All okay. right. So, um, Amanda Aird? I'm here. Uh, Jim Barnes? Dahi Chen? Here. Daniel Christensen? Here. Kate Johnson? Here. Uh, Jennifer Rashko and Jeff Redman. Here. All right, perfect. So, yeah, Kate, if you want to uh, take it from here at the minutes and. Sure, and just go ahead and um, welcome everybody to the call. So, we are the guests uh, here to present as well already? I don't I didn't see anybody else here. Um, I wanted to welcome everybody to this evening to the Parks and Recreation Advisory um, Committee. We have um, a grant um, where there are two guests um, here with us today, the Wilsonville Community Seniors, as well as uh, We Are Wilsonville. Um, tonight they're going to present the, the community grants and this you all um, hopefully we're able to access the opportunity grant applications in advance um, in the uh, original email from Osman um, and as well Ryan followed up with uh, some updates there um, and as a reminder there is a $12,500 available um, award in this grant cycle and if all funds are not allocated the remaining funds will be added to the 12500 available in the spring um, so all of you have taken the time to review uh, grants during the meeting, how this will work is um, um, we're going to have three minutes for um, each applicant to uh, tell the board about their project and then after their three minutes the board will have the opportunity to ask any clarifying qu questions that they may have and we want to uh, limit this Q&A to a total of five minutes per applicant so if you don't have any questions that's okay too. And following the Q&A of both applicants, the board will have an opportunity to discuss and share their thoughts and comments. So we'll, we will take a few minutes and um, allow for that. And then once all of the, the board members um, are shared, the board will need to decide if they want to award the available funds and how much to each applicant. And this, just so everybody knows, this is typically done with one board member making a suggestion a suggestion and then the other is having an opportunity to comment or suggest an adjustment and so at a point when the board appears to be on the same page a motion to award the grant fund will be needed and then a second of that emotion will also be needed so after the second an opportunity for discussion is allowed before taking a vote on the motion so if any if the vote passes the process is complete if the vote does not pass another motion will be needed and um, the above process repeated will um, until a passing vote is accomplished and and so for those of you who have not been through the grant process before or even if you have please feel free you know to you know interrupt and make maybe ask a quick question but for now we'll, we'll move forward and one last thing I'll mention uh, personally I'm going to excuse myself from the voting process as um, I have a uh, conflict of interest with both parties um, uh, one being uh, I have a family member involved uh, on the board for the Wilsonville seniors and then um, and the other I happen to be a chamber member and have a part of a network so to be free and clear I thought I'd step back but just continue to be the facilitator tonight with that any any questions um, it looks like Kevin O'Malley has um, arrived yet he is, and, and Kate, actually, if I can, if we can just pause here for a second. Uh, we forgot to do the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. If you don't mind oh, doing that real quick. And then oh. we, that's okay. 
do we have approval for the minutes? Um, I approve. Do we need a motion to approve? Yeah, we, need, and... we need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All right. So be it. So be it approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, first in line, do we have a? Shall we start with uh, any particular order? We've got two here. Is we are Whistleville ready to go, or? I believe Asamon will need to. Uh... Kate, whichever. Yeah, so uh, did you want to start with uh, which group would you like to start with and I'll let them in? We are Wilsonville. I believe that's Gladys and uh, Boutwell as well as um, Kevin O'Malley if they are, have not. Oh, looks like they're both here. Great. Okay. Welcome. And if you could please uh, step up to the mic, we'll, we'll have um, no more than up to five minutes. Thank you. Hello, I'm Gladys Boutwell and I see Kevin's name there, but I don't see his camera just yet. There he is. Ta -da. Thank you everyone. Shall we get started? Just want to make sure that we're everybody can hear and see. We good? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I'll start out with a very quick introduction. Everyone give me a thumbs up if you can see the share screen. We are Wilsonville, please. Wonderful. So in January this year, the We Are Wilsonville Coalition was formed as a non-political coalition of business professionals who volunteer their talents and experience to serve the Wilsonville community. The Wilsonville Area Chamber of Commerce uh, has committed to supporting the founding of We Are Wilsonville with the expectation that it will evolve into its own 501c3. The purpose of We Are Wilsonville is to bring together and connect Wilsonville businesses, Wilsonville residents, Wilsonville workers, and Wilsonville nonprofits. The vision is that by communicating transparently and working collaboratively among all the stakeholders within the Wilsonville community, we can better achieve the goals and aspirations of our communities and all its members. With that, the other important thing to think about is, let me just stop sharing, uh, who is the group? Uh, one second, no real good way to do that other than click in and click out. Uh, very diverse group. You will, some of you will probably notice some, if not all, of the names. They are folks who live and work uh, here in uh, in Wilsonville. And then, lastly, if you have heard of We Are Wilsonville, uh, it is because when our first meetings happened right after COVID happened, uh, the community needs at that time were that our city understandably couldn't have a celebration, so they everybody said, "Hey, how about We Are Wilsonville taking it over?" and we hosted the We Are Wilsonville uh, 4th of July Wilsonville Celebrates. What next happened is uh, in the interim time period, we have been, and I will stop sharing and go to a, let me see if I can just add you one key thing here, which is how do I get, where did my, can I not share a document? I'm trying to share a document here. Uh, can I share a document file? No, there's no way to share a document. Uh, can we do it by Asaman? Is there a way to share um, a PDF? So you should hit the screen share at the bottom yeah. of your screen and it should give you options to share whatever files you have open. Okay, so we can only share it on the screen. I can't send it. Okay. All right, sorry. Let's do it. Uh, my bad. Okay. Are you going to share it on the screen, Kevin? Well, I am trying to share the file to the to the group. Uh, let's see if that. Nope, it's not working. Yeah, no, we won't be able to share any attachments. I don't think. Okay, so 
one half second here because it's just technology. Where did my screen go? Share screen again. Document is open. So shortly after uh, the George Floyd um, killing, there was a movement among businesses and within our community to say, how can we uh, begin to uh, deal with uh, an issue of diversity, equity, and inclusion? So over the past several months and two weeks ago, the Chamber Board approved a commitment to opportunity, diversity, and equity and we are meeting on the 20th to begin to basically figure out how we can make this an actionable statement. And with that, uh, what we have is we have a group of volunteers. Gladys was part of the work group uh, of uh, people of color that put the, together this commitment to opportunity diversity. And now the question was, uh, what are our action steps? One of which was, how do we begin to educate the community? And with that, I will take it away. Gladys. So what we provided, thank you, Kevin. Uh, so now that's the background as to who and the what is that we provided a budget that is an overall budget of what we're trying to do. And it truly is a start. Uh, we are looking at helping our local business because if we help our local business, then they are going to, they're attached to our community. It, there's a synergy there. Without business and community, it, there, there's, there's no way one can be without the other. One is needed, the other is needed. Um, our business uh, brings in uh, employees that can be from anywhere. They can be from Wilsonville or they can be outside of Wilsonville. And if there's a healthy business, then that means they're going to attract more business or more individuals into Wilsonville, which means more community involvement, more local uh, events, more local business, because they're going to leave money here in Wilsonville. That means more payroll dollars. There's going to be more money spent here in Wilsonville. So it really is to uh, be more robust here in Wilsonville. Um, and the, the staff, as you saw, they're truly invested. If we are Wilsonville, all the volunteers, they are invested in the community. And what we are, our intention is to bring value to our businesses and our community by sharing how we can be accepting of diversity, how we can understand what equity is, and how we can be inclusive. That's very important. And this grant is truly asking for us to bring online diversity and inclusion training. Um, online for two reasons. One, because people can take that training at any given point in time. And two, because of COVID, we really can have social uh, interactions as much as we used to. So this is like the perfect opportunity to start the conversation, begin the trainings, and show how we can have more diversity, equity, and inclusion within the business and community here in Wilsonville. Now, what does that mean? It means that there are a lot of social factors. Diversity, equity, and inclusion play an important role in the health and well-being of a community. And if we focus on those concepts and we shape our world uh, and we form those values and training, the training is going to bring us strate uh, strategic practices to create a more accepting environment. And these courses will share those unique uh, relevant individual concepts um, on identity, power, privilege, and communication. Because as we go through this training, uh, whether it's the community, uh, businesses, employees, the, those shared experiences will have, well, one, shared experiences because there are differences, but with those shared experiences, we can show respect and we can share the need of belonging and feeling appreciation. And I'll, I'll uh, share some of the topics that are being covered. 30 seconds here, Gladys, just so you know All we right. have time here. Okay, thank you. It is going to show how we can be an ally, how we can create an inclusive workforce, uh, strategies, dignity and civilization, power and inequities, stereotypes, tolerance and acceptance. And they're all in bite-sized pieces in order to promote learning and reflection. There's a design to be delivered via desktop or on the cell phone, real life examples, and there's also knowledge check. All that information was they're going through is analyzed and those analytics are provided back in order to help bridge that gap. 
And right now, all we're trying to do is have a start, try something. And I know it's a lot to take in. I'll do a copy and paste of some of these trainings and what it is. Um, but truly, it's a conversation starter to help our community become more understanding. Um, and we got to start somewhere. So thank you Great. for this opportunity and this time. Great. Thank you very much, both uh, Kevin and Gladys. Um, with that, I think we're going to hold off on comments till the very end, if that's okay with everybody. Is that agreeable? Take, take a few minutes and then we'll go to the next presenter. Hey, if I may. Yes. I would probably encourage you, just because of the format tonight, of letting one group in, one group out, that if the board has uh -huh. any questions, you take care of that now before we move on to the WCSI. You don't have okay. to make your uh, recommendation for funding at this point, but I would allow the board to ask any questions they may have for Gladys and Kevin. Okay. So do we have questions from the board um, for Gladys and Kevin while we're, while we're here? Thank you, Brian. Yeah, Jeff Redmond. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm not sure you could hear me. Yeah, I'm just curious and thank you for the, for the, the, uh, uh, your presentation. I was trying to find publications, flyers, or examples of your training curriculum, and I, I don't, I wasn't able to do so, and I apologize if I missed those, but I was hoping to be able to, to visualize some of these trainings that you're talking about putting forward. Yeah, I will um, provide a, a link to um, the solutions that's going to be specific on um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. There are a couple of, uh, well, there's more than a couple, but the main one that uh, we were looking at is uh, through EverFi. There's also Canary that focuses on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, but the main one here, EverFi, if you can see, it's uh, they do a lot of different trainings, including K through 12, a lot of financial training. But part of their training uh, for corporations and nonprofit is for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that's where these particular um, topics are coming from is EverFi. I included the link in the, in the uh, chat. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Amanda, I have a question. Um, so I kind of looked at EverFi um, and their online platform. And I'm wondering who, who do you plan on sending this to or reaching out to to take this training? And have you been in contact with EverFi to um, identify like how many licenses you get? Like how many can you have per course or? Right. So our number one was the businesses and going to the businesses, then it can go to the employees. We can also go to chamber members. We, we can go to individuals within the community. Um, the, what we requested is for up to 100 um, users, if you will. However, um, it is a one-time fee. So if we were to add more than those 100 users to begin with, um, they're not going to charge us any more during the year. Uh, which is really nice, uh, whereas Canary would, uh, EverFi will not. It's a one flat fee, um, which also provides support. And uh, that was one of the conversations we were having with Kevin is how do we roll it out? Once we know that we can, what we can do and how to utilize it, whether it's making a hundred Google accounts that are going to be reused, we give it to this one organization for a month and then we take it and move it to the next one. Um, that way it's uh, passwords get changed and then somebody else can utilize it. We can definitely do that. Uh, so there's a variety of ways, but um, they're not going to charge us if we pay for a hundred and then we wind up with 500, they're not going to charge us more. The, the, the primary question of, of businesses is obviously how the group uh, is primarily organized is, is for businesses, but it's all about bringing the community together. And this is a, a great example, I think the question you raised, Amanda, of how that, how that might happen. So the idea is that everybody, everybody works. If we start at the work foundation, then those folks that are working are also, you know, residents here in the, in the city. But we've had initial conversations with our library about setting it up much like a, uh, you know, a book loaner would be set up and they're open and having that discussion. They've made no commitments. Uh, we've talked to neighborhood associations uh, and any other uh, ideas that the round table happens and recognizing our meeting is the 20th. So what happened is because of the deadline, we moved this forward with a preliminary conversation in order to say, 
it's a quality program, it's well respected. Uh, question fundamentally is, does the community benefit by this type of education? And then follow, follow through of, of pushing it out there. So the motivation is to make it available. You don't have to be a chamber member. You know, it's, it's any organization that wants to do it. Uh, and it could be a family for that matter that says we wanna, you know, we wanna take the training. Does that, does that help answer the question? Thank you. Sure. I guess I have a question. This is Daniel. Uh, I'm just trying to understand the, the business proposition here because I can understand that if this was a community service to organizations that you know, are not businesses, but are, are businesses um, have the cap capability of, of maybe buying in or licensing these services themselves. In that case, are you just a, a conduit and you're the engagement piece that is matchmaking between a business and uh, these services um, that are, you know, technology platforms and, and that type of a thing. So I'm just trying to understand the distinction in the, the what is the community uh, aspect, community service aspect, which I can understand you're using grant dollars to help, um, you know, get off the ground, whereas uh, something where you're marketing to businesses that um, if they're taking this seriously, they can um, license this technology or something them, themselves. Maybe you're just the matchmaker, but, um, and how is that folded into your, your ask for your, I think there's some administrative thing. I don't know. I, I kind of go, glance through the, the funding request and. Um, yeah, that two, two part question. Let me answer the second part. Um, the budget was a budget, so you understood since it's a new group, yeah. the focus would be on what your grant allows, which is, is training. So the other uh, that are not part of a normal grant process, you know, we're talking about the $9,000 in, in training. I think the best question is the reason, whole reason we are Wilsonville was established was that there's this idea that business is part of the community, but somehow maybe different than the community. And the reality is that our community has a smart transit system because business is part of the community and, and funds that. And it, and it is a little bit different looking at it because what we, what we found, for example, in the 4th of July was the community, the residents of the city said, hey, business community, can you help us here? We wanna have something in the summertime that celebrates our community and turn to the We Are Wilsonville the business people and said, would you put this together? So it, it is a little unusual in the sense that business is usually there to sponsor the sports team or whatever else, but that's exactly why this group was stood up, which is how do we work all the different groups of this community and bring them around the table? The city will do a task force. And the model really is when there's a big issue, a task force gets pulled together and everybody works on it. We are Wilson was saying there's, all of these issues impact all of our community. And I would, I would submit that when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, which are not only justice and racial issues, they are issues of, of economic opportunity first and foremost for all our members. And that's really why it was like, okay, this is a community um, grant. This is about serving the community. And does it first and foremost serve the business community? Without question, it does, but that's not, um, that's not the sole source. So, so are, do you, are you using this as a, as a consulting kind of model or is that what you're proposing this as? No, we are, we're saying that the grant funds the licenses and the licenses okay. are real simple. We are the facilitator to make sure it all works because that's, that's what it is. We have no financial interest in it. There is no economic factor. It'll be a cost for the group, for the chamber in this case, to to make this thing work, but you know, in terms of the admin and everything else, but the cost of the licenses, if you are Coke and Swire Coca-Cola, you're taken care of because you have national people. When you look at the vast majority of every other person, you know, in this community that works, most of us have never been offered diversity, equity, and inclusion training by, by most of the employers. So that's kind of the, you know, the background on it. So okay. along with the citizens, because we, no, think, we think it's a distinction. Out we can push out to the, to the citizens um, and the community at large. So. That makes sense. Professor Zidari, um, 
I still want to kind of understand uh, there are two things here. One is that you say the license. I'm not sure uh, what, what the license is for. And is that uh, in, the, in the application, you, there is a mentioning of uh, Chamber of uh, Commerce. And I'm, maybe I misunderstood this, but it's like the I'm just looking here, just uh, let me find out where it says. Uh, oh yeah, this uh, Chamber of Commerce Board is supporting and has approved the effort. What does that mean, approved? Mm -hmm. And so is, is, is this new organization affiliated with the Chamber of Commerce? Absolutely. Or is this something else? So the, the, the group was formed with this, the support uh, of, of the chamber in order to exist. And the goal is that early next year, it will be its own 501 C3 as a community wide organization, just as uh, with its purpose as, so yeah, so the chamber is a 50, so the chamber is a nonprofit and we are Wilsonville functions effectively like a committee of the, you know, of the chamber at you know, at arm's length, independently. It's led by those those volunteers that you saw, those community members, those residents of the city. And the, the licenses have to be set up by someone. So they're set up to be used, quote unquote, by the, by the We Are Wilsonville group. And at which point that's how the licenses get distributed around and used for the, for the year of training. I apologize if I'm not understanding the question. So, okay, so the licenses are for the training materials? Yes, that's exactly. You have the, all, the, all the online materials are intellectual property by a company that is recognized and respected and sells this to, to, to all, over the, you know, all over the country. So this is, if the city wanted to do this, the city could go out and buy the you know, the license for the city to use this for its internal employees. Okay. Yeah. And, and Daniel made the point that businesses could go out and do this. Practically speaking, it's an expensive proposition to do. And many of them uh, are not even aware that it exists, much less, yeah. So is this like a concurrent use type of thing or, uh, cause it's not a named user license. I think you touched on that, but unless you use the named user is generic and you're trying to recycle them. Is that part of the terms and conditions? Is that, how does that yes. work? So that sounds a little squishy. That's all. I just, uh, we need to, we will do that. If the preference is not, we want everybody to have their own so that they can continue to utilize it. That's one of the beauty of not having a one-time payment is that we don't have to continue to add more users to it. We can just add them. They're not going to charge us more for it. Uh, so we would rather not reuse unless we absolutely had to. So you, you have 100 seats and what they have said is in a normal case, those are companies. If we set them up and they have acknowledged through the email that, okay, because it's a chamber slash nonprofit organization, as long as there are 100 seats, you can have as many people under those 100 seats as you choose. Okay, that makes sense. No, I get that. There's probably there's a lot of structures like that. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I was pleasantly surprised because yeah. otherwise it's just astronomical and it doesn't doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Anyone else have any further questions? We want to take this time to, um, at this point, Brian, that they can make a decision to recommend or not. Uh, I would Shall probably, encourage, I'm sorry, Kate. I would probably encourage at this time, we allow Kevin and Gladys to step away. Uh, we hear from the WCSI in their presentation. You can do a Q&A with them. And then once you have information from both applicants, I will help you with your decision process. Uh, and at that point, you can have discussion on funding levels. Perfect. Thank you all Thank for your you, time. Gladys. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much for appreciate it. considering it. Excellent. Uh, next up, we have um, the uh, Wilsonville seniors. 
I believe it is Donna Atkinson and Jay Leach is joining us. Are we? Are they? Are they present? I don't see them on the screen here. Wilsonville Community Senior, are you, are you with us? I'm here. Hi, Jay Leach. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Good to uh, hear you. <laughs> yeah, my videos should be coming up. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Did it work? Donna with us? Uh, uh, I see your name at the bottom. Chime in. Um, is my video working, guys? I hear you okay. Well, um, let me get started so we don't delay any more. Um, is Donna? Sure. I don't see Donna in here. I see Lynn Carlton, Lynn, but I don't see Donna. I think they're together. So, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm stepping in for Nancy Combs tonight, who is our chair of WCSI. As she had a family emergency she needed to attend to. So if I stumble, I apologize. I just got some of this information uh, less than two days ago. But I'm going to tell you what WCSI is. We're the Wilsonville Community Seniors Incorporated, and it was established in 1984. Um, and we've continued to move forward. What we do is we seek to build visibility, uh, collaboration with community, and enrichment of lives of those individuals 55 and over, as well as contribute to the community as a whole. So why this is important is because in Wilsonville, we have approximately 6,000 uh, individuals over the age of 55 which classifies them as that senior and we have approximately 24,000 people that means one quarter of our population is senior citizens so according to the world health association six percent of our seniors live in isolation because they don't have programs that get them out make them social have them interact keep stimulated and those are direct results of their health so what does wcsdi tries to do is find programs that fill deficits um, and opportunities that allow some of our members to have communication they may not have access to, to be able to go on trips that otherwise they would not be able to go on to. And we subsidize the fundraising mm -hmm. and donations to take the individuals on those trips. Um, according to the last census report, 8% of our seniors 65 and over live under the poverty level. So having programs like this that can subsidize some of their activities is a great opportunity for them to get to do things that they normally wouldn't do. So we proposed our grants to cover a, a period of our Gazette publication. And the reason we haven't quite moved fully digital yet is because we still have some users out there who prefer that hard copy but also, um, like I said, that 8% poverty level, they don't have so the electronic media to find that information um, or obtain that equipment they need or the training to use it. So there are things that some people, my mother included, like to put the little menu up on their refrigerator and keep track of it. Um, we are working towards moving more towards the media, but want to not eliminate that possibility for anyone and still have those published processes. Um, Dawn is gonna talk to you about the field trips and our peacemakers. Donna, are you there? Can you hear me? Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> I didn't know how to turn on my uh, Mac computer, so I'm over at Lynn's on hers. <laughs> um, so the, re our, uh, Wilsonville, peacemakers they make um quilts for the meridian park hospital casa veterans hospital and they did um quilts last year for the villa bois fire uh victims they uh do quilts for tots to tots quilts um they make therapy dolls that go to uh, Reynolds uh, Children's Hospital. They do um, breast pills for breast cancer, both men and women. 
Uh, they do purple hats for the shaken baby syndrome program. They do mats for the dog mats and beds for the CPSA. And uh, then the, the projects are not only for the people who receive the items, but our seniors who make the items. Uh, and this allows them to make uh, feel worthy. Um, our oldest um, quilt makers, I think she's 94 now. Uh, the ladies uh, spend their time. They also use some of their money, personal monies uh, for the expenses. And um, I think it, it helps them feel that they're helping the community more. Uh, and um, it takes money to buy the um, material, the maintain the machines, um, labels, threads, cutting boards, fabrics, yarn, and um, that's all on the on the um, quilters. Now the trips for the seniors. Um, we do two trips a month, and uh, and then we try to do one trip. Well, we're going to try to do two uh, to either the coast or up to Mount Hood, and this gets our seniors out and about to socialize. And we always go to lunch first on our trips. Um, then we do two, like I was saying, two months, two trips a month. And thank you with SMART, that uh, helps. Um, we don't have to pay for that. They, have, they always get a grant, so it's just the lunches. But I try to do the trips educational, and they know I don't go to malls. So we always have to have someone else do that. But I always give them a little uh, synopsis on where we're going and so forth. Great, so I think we're about time there. Um, do we have questions from the board? Uh, Daniel, I have a question. Uh, so how does this work? Because I think the, uh, the, the immediate thing that comes to mind is that there's complexity around uh, COVID relating to seniors getting together on buses and going to restaurants. And um, is that factored into your uh, planning? And if so, um, how are you mitigating the potential impacts of that? Or if you got a bail uh, on that, can the funds be rolled over to the next, you know, I guess. We, we, the, the budget that we have, I think Nancy had put down, it was for 18 months. We were kind of rolling over to next year, okay. just in case, you know, that. So, sorry. sorry. Ideally, we would like to be able to, we already run these processes currently and we were stopped in March once everything was shut down. What we'd like to be able to do is once we're released and we're able to get going again, get on those buses and get the seniors out, get them back together, having them have lunches, having them come in for bingo games. Um, we're looking at other ways to reach out to them. If we can't do group things, uh, we're talking about starting a secret pen pal program, things like that. But until we know that we can get them on the buses, because um, I believe Donna, it's what, five people are allowed on a bus right now. So it's not cost effective for us to do trips. But well, we for one, one thing, um, <laughs> venues aren't open. Yeah. So that so. money would be rolled over into the 21, to 22 year, the funding would still stay in the program for the purposes that it's given to us for. That makes sense. Thanks. Do you have other questions from the board? Um, just to have a, yeah, I have a question just about the rolling it over. Um, is there a time frame like the 12 months or is it possible for them to roll over that balance? Um, 
we fully function on donation and grant funds. So any, so all funds stay within the program or supporting systems of the program. We would, um, we've, we're looking as far out as 18 months, but you know, when we originally shut down for COVID, we believed everybody would be back by summer and then it got extended and then it got extended. We would not, um, use the money that in the grant for the grant money, we would keep the grant money in the three programs that we're asking for the money for. Um, it's budgeted that way and that's where it belongs. So if, if we couldn't do the trips or if um, the quilt makers can't meet and can't make quilts for the next year, that money would roll into the following year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you gonna say something, Brian? Yeah, I was just to speak to a little bit from a, a grant management and just let the board know how we've handled these sorts of situations in the past. Um, so obviously uh, the grant is written with specifications as to what's gonna happen uh, within a certain time frame. Uh, as Donna and Jalith mentioned, you know, this is, is written from an 18th month perspective. Uh, we keep, a, keep an eye, we, I personally keep in contact with the, the various grant applicants. If they are not able to fulfill their obligations based on what the grant was presented as. Uh, we either ask for those funds to be returned or they can ask for an extension. Uh, the grant cycle that happened about a year ago, just because of everything uh, that has transpired with COVID-19, a number of those organizations have requested and have been granted uh, an extension. And one just determined they weren't gonna be able to do the project as described. Uh, so they did return their funds. So uh, from a management perspective, I personally keep an eye on that and uh, often funds are rolled over it and given an extension with a secondary timeline or uh, if we don't think the project is going to be able to be completed as described, uh, then we do request those funds are returned. Okay, thanks. And Jeff, did you have any Jeff or Daniel, any, any more feedback questions? Okay. So we've heard from both. Um, Brian, did you want to direct on what um, we want to do next here? Uh, I would say if the board has no further questions for Jalith and Donna, you can let them exit. And then at that time, uh, the board is open to have discussion on preferences of funding either or both and at what levels. Okay, and but they'll both can be um, present and listening. It's an open discussion, right, for the, the panel or are they leaving the room? Like, leaving? Oh, well, the other, the other grant had to leave the room. We can leave the room, it's fine. So they will, okay. They will be able to watch, even though you cannot see them or hear them at the moment. Uh, they are present. They are able to continue to watch. So whatever you say uh, is in a public forum uh, with the applicants uh, taking part. Uh, but at this point, they are no longer part of the discussion. So uh, whatever info you have it is what you will make your decisions with. Great. Thank you for that clarification. So again, um, I'm going to open it up to the board and again uh, remind everybody I'm excusing myself but as a reminder that um, there's $12,500 available to award for this grant cycle um, and for um, Brian's uh, also addition to if all funds are not allocated the remaining funds will be added um, and available in the spring so uh, would anybody like to start uh, deliberating feedback on recommendations? I can, I can start. I have a few I had to. Uh, I'll just tell you what my take was. Uh, and looking at the materials, and obviously this is the first time I've, I've done this, so I don't know what the, the, the standards are. But uh, you know, one thing that uh, you know, the first applicant, I think one thing that stood out for me from the criteria was that you were trying to emphasize maybe new applicants and getting uh, sort of a program potentially rolling and, and seeing them. But the, the, the squishier part of it is, is I don't know what's measurable in that. 
And if that is being emphasized uh, from a programmatic standpoint, um, I don't know. I, I didn't really see that that was overly um, clear to me, but uh, it seems like they're just kind of getting started and they've recognized uh, a need and they're trying to fill that need um, through this as um, effectively as they can. So uh, I think in that sense, I, I think, uh, you know, that's uh, worthwhile. Uh, however, I, the other applicant, I, I gotta admit, I think that's totally dialed in. It looks like from uh, their previous um, dollars that they've received grants in the past, and it looks like it's well spent. They know exactly what it costs. They deliver uh, uh, things that have a need and are, are respected. And, and it, I think that my only concern is just that, um, you know, that just they're not going to be able to um, provide uh, the opportunities. So it's just about, you know, if they can make that up somehow in a way. I, I imagine after a while, these poor seniors who have been kind of locked in a bit would just love to just do a lot of things. So maybe they do a lot of trips or something like that when it's safe to do so. But um, so I don't know. I mean, they're both kind of worthwhile, but I guess I'm not making very yeah, but <laughs> concrete. For, for what, well, I guess if, the, if you were to give a specific number, I, um, without, would there be a part of the 12,500 or are you it sounds like something. Um, do you want to think on that or just or put out a number? Well, I mean, I think that you know, if you look at the uh, the second applicant, their numbers seem to be, uh, you know, they're not asking for a lot and they have it pretty well substantiated and documented what their costs are and what they can get out of it. So um, I think what they're asking for is reasonable and they have some in-kind contribution. It's, it's not that much. I think the other one, it's a bit, um, well, I know they kind of defeat each other because you can't, you can't with 12,500, you can't do both. So if you can, maybe if it's, if you say 12,500 and give the remainder to the other one, um, I don't know, that's one way to do it. I don't know if that's possible. That's with the rules or whatever. It looks like it's possible. Yeah. Um, Amanda? Sorry, I'm over here doing math. Because <laughs> um, I kind of see the equity inclusion in the first group. They, that program um, to buy the actual perm or the um, licenses is going to be $9,200. Um, whereas the seniors, if you take away like the bus charter fee um, and the subsidized admission fees, you're looking at $6,000. So we're still short. I don't know. I would love to just be able to give the first group the $9,200 and then give the remaining to the seniors. Okay. Ahi or Jeff, do you, do you have feedback here? Recommendations? Um, Ahi, are you there? Or, go ahead. Can okay. I ask one more question? Uh, what happened to the grant funding from the spring? Last spring. So the grant, the opportunity and the tourism grant uh, that the city had available in March and April of last year, uh, the city chose not to award those and those funds were just absorbed back into the city's general fund, uh, essentially as a cost saving measure uh, with a number of other cuts that we made um, in preparation for uh, lost revenue as, as a result of COVID. Okay. Um, Kate, I mean, since you have experience with both of these groups, do you foresee either one of them being to get, able to get more grant funding from any outside sources? Uh, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to speak on that. Yeah, I'll just jump in and say, uh, 
as part of her recusal of this conversation, I'm going to ask her not to comment on that. <laughs> I got a gag order, my friend. <laughs> oh, <I'm> so sorry. <laughs> All right. What is everybody else thinking? Because I feel like I, I feel like a, a terrible human being wanting to, like, take money out of the request from the senior organization and put it onto this other one. Hey, Jeff. Can Jeff hear us? Uh, it's part like of a shirt. I see Jeff out of here. I see you. Ahi, are you present? Yes, I am. I'm waiting you Can you make a recommendation? Uh, yes, I called well, earlier. I was waiting for both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it was a very noisy. I couldn't hear. Uh, I wasn't sure you how it's called. Anyway, uh, um, see, I've been thinking. I mean, unfortunately, it's, uh, uh, it can't do both. You know, where Wilsonville is, um, it's a new idea, and uh, you know, unless you try it, you never know it's going to work. So. Uh, I, I I think uh, I had a similar feeling like uh, that I put out who that was and maybe Daniel said at the very beginning that uh, you know there's some something which is not crystal clear to me but uh, on my head and like I said it's a new idea and uh, unless you give it a shot and see what happens and you you will not be able to find out if it works uh, but uh, on the other hand that uh, yeah, I don't know how much the minimum you can, you know, to make them really start functioning. Is that a, a license in 9,000? That's the minimum you have to get to that? Or is that just something you could have considered something smaller number and then they would have make up the difference and go from there? The, the my preference is that I would consider to give them just enough to so they can start it. Uh, the only trouble with uh, the senior is I have is uh, 18 months. Uh, yet, my understanding of the grant is that you, we want to kind of fund something which kind of like this is considered a seed money, so to get somebody started. Um, 18 months of printing, that's, I mean, if, if, if we really come to it, maybe we can look at it in like a year from now or even six months now because we've got a next, you know, within six months we have another of this, or they cannot do that. I don't, I forgot, right? Right? Can they still apply within a year or they have to be wait for? I know they cannot do it next uh, in, within six months, but it can they still do it in next year? Apply for the point again? So you, you are correct. They can only apply and receive funds in one fiscal year. So because this is the first grant of this fiscal year, they'd not be, if they got any funding this year, they would not be eligible for funding uh, until a year from now. Now to clarify right. that a bit further, because their program is spaced out 18 months, until this program is completed, when that 18 months is up or all funds have been allocated as described in the grant, uh, they would not be eligible for funds again either. So um, to the point of you, you wanna wait, we really can't, we either fund now um, and then they'd be eligible uh, again in a year and a half or when the funds are spent. So um, on one hand, I understand the concern of that long timeline. Uh, I think in normal times, uh, we would want things a little bit uh, tighter than that, but given the uncertainties of, of COVID and, and travel restrictions and venues being open, um, you know, we are living in uncertain times. So. Uh, I think I do give the board a little bit of credit for having the foresight to to space it out that far, um, but understand that whatever we fund tonight, they would not be eligible for funds again until uh, the funds are spent in the manner that's described in their application. So for the senior organization, you there, 
within 12 months they will be eligible or they just not eligible at all until the 18 month period. If they're able to accomplish everything in their grant and utilize the funds as explained within 12 months, then yes, they could come back uh, provided they've submitted their final report. But if they're still doing programs from this application 18 months from now, they would not be eligible to come back. Okay. Okay, so could we, it, can we take bits and pieces out of the approval part of the grant? Like if we did, we said, we're not going to uh, fund this portion for senior trips or subsidized admission fees. Does that mean they could come back in 12 months and ask for those fees? Potentially. <laughs> I mean, I think if you're very explicit in what you're funding, then we probably could have that conversation uh, in 12 months. Okay. Uh, we probably wait for the, lot, the recommendation fully from everyone. Um, Jeff, can you speak to um, what you recommend for the two committees, please? Yeah, Kate, can you hear me? Yes, yes I can. Okay, and I apologize if I was interrupting before. I wasn't sure of the protocol. Um, I guess for me personally, I'll just cut, uh, quickly summarize. I'm going to go right to number two. I, I'm in full bright green light mode with the senior program and taking care of our senior citizens in the in the request they've made. Could we tighten up some of those areas? We can take a look at that. But I'm full bright green light for me on number two. First, and, and for the first presenters, um, I did take the opportunity to go on and look at that website they provided. I've actually helped orchestrate and um, implement programs like this with multiple companies. These are canned, if you will, training courses. Um, and Fortune 500 companies can afford that. I don't know why, unless I'm really missing some key component here in the interface, a lot of these programs can be funded and these, these companies have plenty of money to fund training programs like this within their own organization. So I, again, I could be missing something, but I'm just, I'm just not seeing why we should be using grant monies through this program to help companies do something they should be doing on their own dime. That's, that's just my two cents and I thank you. Jeff, I, my takeaway from that was that these, they aren't targeting the, you know, the giant companies within Wilsonville. They're targeting like the community groups or um, small businesses who don't have the resources to do that on their own. Jeff went to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> yeah, what, I, 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 was that a question back to me or was that just an observation? Yeah, she I was replying to, she was talking to you. And you yeah, was, yeah, so if, yes. if that, if that is the determinant, then I, then that takes, a, that's a whole different outlook. But if it's just, if it's a, if it's a business that has a financial base to do this on their own, then I'm not in support of it. So if this Wait, is just, well, you got to hear what Amanda said though. Jeff, I think you missed what she said. If you could stay in one place for a second and hear her, uh, essentially she was saying that it's not the large fortune 500 companies that are pushing it, what they were describing were the small to medium sized main street businesses locally that don't have any program put in place. And that was what they, the presentation was about, if that's, that's yeah. accurate, Amanda. Yeah, that's what I was going for. I mean, he even called out going to like li the library and neighborhood associations. Right, right. I'll be honest that as well. Any other? Further comments, discussion? Do we want to make a decision on allocating the 12,500? If so, if um, one of you or can put out the, the number or not put out the number or, or make a flat out recommendation and we'll go from there. I just want to uh, emphasize, um, it's already been said, but just I like the idea that um, for the seniors, I think they're, they're that's a dialed in group, but I think Obviously, the question mark is the is the trips and the 
so if, if we could parse that out and um, give them the remainder, I don't know what the math is, I'm not looking at my the thing there, but, and then the remainder goes to the We Are Wilsonville and you, maybe give them a shot. Uh, I feel that's kind of reasonable, um, but that's just my, my thoughts. But what, I've heard that. What, 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 would be the, what would be the numbers? Has anybody got the, the numbers? So like the numbers for that would be um, so the Wilsonville seniors, they were going for uh, 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 less than $900, right? So me so out on you this. kind of broke up, Kate. Um, oh, less than $900 senior trips. Is, is that what I heard? Is that what um, I heard say, Daniel? I'm. I think you're at $2,150 to pull out. $2,150 is the ask for the seniors. Is that what I heard? Well, $2,150 is the combined line items of senior trip to Oregon Coast charter bus fee at 1500 plus senior trips subsidized admission fees of six. Hundred and fifty for a total of twenty one fifty. So you'd be pulling that out of their ask of sixty three hundred. I, I think my recommendation would be to award forty five hundred to the seniors and eight thousand to the We Are Wilsonville. Amanda, if you feel strongly Anyone about else? that, you can make a motion and see if you get a second and have oh. an opportunity for discussion after that. There you go. Darn technicalities. I make a motion to award um, 4,500 to Wilsonville Community Seniors and 8,000 to We Are Wilsonville. Second. I'll second. Do we have a second or do we have a discussion? I yeah, I'll, I'll give a second. Okay. I'll take well, Before you take that vote, Kate, just oh. make sure, is there any discussion or any other comments from the board? I was thinking there might have been discussion here. Um, Jeff, did you have any further discussion on that? Did you, I didn't see a vote from you. No, I heard the I heard the necessary vote, so I just kept quiet. So if there's no further discussion, okay. let's take that vote again, please, Kate. So I, I hear the scene for the um Wilsonville community seniors we have a vote for forty five hundred and for um, the WAW it says eight thousand dollars. We are Wilsonville, eight thousand dollars. And if we could vote just by a show of hands, uh, all those in favor, if you can please raise your hand. I see two okay, hands. Thank you. Any opposed? Hello. Or Dahe, sorry, you're on the phone. And Kate, you're on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I reached on my hand. You missed it. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, my vote's an eye. And any opposed? Any abstaining? I'm abstaining. Kate Johnson abstaining. And Jeff, did I miss you? Where was your vote on that? He remained quiet but acknowledged, it sounds like. But um, Jeff, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Sorry. We yeah. Got you. Yeah. This phone thing is just. I apologize. Yeah. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna just stay neutral on that whole piece. Okay. You're gonna abstain from a vote. Yes, I am. All right. Thank you.
Okay. Well, it sounds like we have a, um, a vote for 4500 for the seniors, right? And, and $8,000 for We Are Wilsonville. And that's final. Yes? That's a okay. final vote of three yeses, one abstention, or two abstentions, excuse me. Three yeses, two abstentions. Brian, Is that enough? Uh, oh, go ahead. Does the decision, do we need to clarify or do we want to clarify that, uh, or do you want to look into whether or not the, um, the senior group is eligible for reapplying uh, for those additional funds um, at some point? And just do we put like a little, uh, you know, descriptor in, in the response? Uh, or I don't know how you want to play that, but. Yeah, I'm happy to uh, handle the, the paperwork side of that from an eligibility perspective. If I understand what the board is, is attempting to do here uh, from the standpoint of trips, uh, the fact that you are not funding any of the trips, you would like them to be eligible for trip funding again uh, a year from now should uh, trips be available. Is that correct? Yep. Yes. That is correct. Okay. I think uh, we are finished on the subject and we have the next uh, agenda item there. Or do we want to call them in, Brian, or at this, at this junction? Awesome, Mom, do you have the ability to invite them all back in at the moment? They're all back in. Everyone's back? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, so welcome back, everybody. I, um, I want to um, announce the awards for uh, the recommendations that were made tonight. Um, this evening we have the Wilsonville, uh, or excuse me, we are Wilsonville um, being awarded $8,000 um, and um, Wilsonville Community Seniors being awarded $4,500. Cool, Brian thank you. Add? And for those of you uh, that were awarded funds, uh, you will be hearing from me in the next week or so. Uh, I will get you a funds acceptance agreement and a W-9 for the organization. Uh, the one point of clarification that you should be prepared to navigate would be the We Are Wilsonville group. Uh, as the applicant being We Are Wilsonville, the check will be going to We Are Wilsonville. So it sounds like you, you are working through some logistics of your uh, 501c3. I don't know if a, a bank account is in place under We Are, are Wilsonville, but the applicant is who the check will need to be issued to. Um, so just be prepared to have that conversation with me uh, when the time comes. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Otherwise, that's all I have on the grant side. Wonderful. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You're welcome. So we have uh, next on the agenda. I don't have my agenda in front of me. Someone have it. Is that hearing from, from Mike next? Yes, that would be me. Hey, Kate. <laughs> good evening. Yeah, great job on the grant, you guys. That was a really good job and good dialogue. Thank you. 
also, I wanted to thank the committee for or the board for their patience. This has been a long uh, delay in our meetings and thanks for sticking with us. Uh, Daniel, Jeff, everybody, Dahi, I, Dahi's, I saw him in front of my house a couple days ago or a few days ago, but Amanda, all you guys, thank you for hanging in there with us. I really appreciate that. Um, I don't have a lot on my review because Brian has the meal program and Brian does a great job with the grants. As you just saw, he is amazing with this grant stuff. He's just an expert. Um, Erica has all the programs we have going and she has a multitude of programs that people don't even see, or at least a lot of people don't see. Um, they think it has to be live and in person, but she does so many things and she'll tell you about all her fall activities. Um, Dustin, I'm gonna introduce Dustin. He'll show his face hopefully some time in this meeting. Um, he's our new park supervisor doing a great job. Really good guy and really intelligent and really there he is. And, and really good for the community. Um, he's out there running around, at, literally running around and doing a lot of things, but he'll give the updates on the projects. So my updates are really based on Brian, Eric, and Dustin. Um, I do wanna thank Awesome on for tonight. She's the only one at the office tonight doing an awesome job, as she always does. And I think Beth, I don't know if Beth's still there or not, but Beth Wolf may not shore face, or there she is, she did shore face, um, with our, our IT department who was there with Awesome on, just in case we had a little glitch here or there. And our IT department with Beth and uh, Andy and everybody over there, they do an amazing job. Um, other than that, I'm looking at my list, I really don't have much um, except giving it to Brian, Erica, and Dustin. And again, thanking the committee for their patience and uh, sticking with us. And hopefully we'll have some more regular meetings in the future, but we'll have to see where that goes. So thank you. Great, thank you. Welcome, Dustin. Thank you. Did you want to share any anything, Dustin, on your projects or anything since you're since you're here? Yeah, I don't know how Osman has everything <clears throat> laid out if we're if we're set to go there or not. I certainly can go go first. It's totally uh, what we uh, what we have queued up. <clears throat> so I thought I'd just take a little time to uh, kind of go over the the projects that we've been working on uh, since you guys last met, which I believe was February. Um, so what we're looking at here is um, the Marasi play structure. On the far left, we put in a, <clears throat> a double basket swing system and a pour in place unitary surface. It's a fully accessible um, for, for kids of all ages and abilities. <clears throat> and then we needed to do some, uh, some necessary improvements to the, uh, the much beloved uh, embankment slide. Uh, it was in constant need of uh, compliance work. So we, we in-house brought in a bunch of basalt columns that match the rest of the Marasi landscaping. Um, we got some uh, some wood fiber chips that that meet the the playground code, and uh, the finished product there is is on the right. The the middle picture is a, a teammate who will uh, love that he was featured in this presentation. It's uh, it's Roger Moeller who's always uh, up for a good time. So he was. Hey, hey Dustin. Yes, sir. Let the committee know how much money we saved on this by doing it with you guys. So we received quotes anywhere from uh, 95 to $175,000 to pull this project off. And we came in at right about $50,000 uh, material and labor when it was all said and done. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, obviously a, a substantial savings on that front. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> the next project that's queued up, um, we've been doing some work at, um, I believe it's the park at Mary's Field. Yep, so the, uh, the park at Mary's Field had a uh, outdated and overgrown play structure, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner. Um, it had kind of, it was the second oldest play structure in the city. Um, we, we addressed, or we, we identified it as a need to be updated. Um, the, the play structure that went in is, is on the right. Um, obviously an improvement and we've 
taken some time to to cut a new trail in there as you can see from the top that goes up to the rv short fir which is an oregon uh, heritage tree and what that trail allows us to do is it segments the hill as you can see which makes it uh, much simpler for our team to maintain so that we can keep that that overgrowth off it as we move forward and keep that playground um you know viable and playable for for many years to come and then uh, finally we've we've spent a, a lot of team time um team resources into the uh the new dog park um at memorial here um <clears throat> we've spent 600 plus team hours on it this summer um it's similar in footprint to the previous dog park um we've incor incorporated almost a mile of new trail in the uh memorial uh the woods in memorial there as well as in the dog park um it has a dog wash station which has two a, a shelter which has two wash stations and the the ability to wash four four dogs at once kind of a, a water and a hose system where you can scrub down your pets after they have fun um full use bathroom which is a, a far improvement over the uh, portable restroom at the old dog park and uh this one also has function, <clears throat> functioning irrigation and we cut in subsurface, dra subsurface drainage to help in the rainy season kind of keep some of that mud um, from, from piling up in there. So there's some other pictures of the, the landscaping. Um, the old dog park is up in the right hand corner there. You can see it's just the standard, uh, you know, almost farm wire fence. We went with a, a black cyclone fence, which is a nice, nice look down there in the new dog park and uh, that'll, That'll open up next Friday, and we're we're excited to get it opened up and, and get the community out there and using it. And, and that had, just to let you guys know, that entire area down there by the community garden, uh, <laughs> there's a bee pollinator down there. It is a the whole area has been upgraded with bark chips and and just amenities like Dustin just talked about. It's really a top notch area uh, view dog park. Uh, it, it's crazy good, uh, as good of a, as I've ever seen. So hopefully you get a chance to look at it and maybe take your pet or just take a walk. We have various trails going through that Dustin and his crew have done. It, it's an amazing area. So um, again, Dustin and his crew did a great job. And again, we cut costs as best we could, did most of it in house with irrigation and everything. And it, it, we're really proud of it and can't wait to have it open. Yeah, I think I think Mike Mike hit on a couple of big things there. It's it's been a, a, a kind of a, a rejuvenation of that area from the community garden forward, uh, that pollinator area, and and we poured poured a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, trails, concrete work, irrigation was all done in house to uh, to spur on cost savings and try to get the 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 nicest the nicest final final product at the the best available price. I've been down there a lot. It is beautiful. You guys did a nice job. Yeah, thank you. We're 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 very proud of it. That's for sure. That's uh, that's all I've got. Unless anybody has any questions for me, I can uh, let somebody else talk about all the wonderful. That's all open to the public, right? Is, how how often is that maintained? I might have missed that. <clears throat> so. So this will be this will be mowed on a weekly schedule, um, much like the rest of the parks as we move forward here. Um, with the with the irrigation now uh, compared to the other dog park, where in the summer that grass died out and it didn't need to be maintained as much, um, we will be out here on a on a weekly rotation taking care of the new dog parks. And that includes like potholes and and water. Is there a water station? I think there is. Right? Yeah, there's a drinking fountain um, station. Uh, a bottle fill and then a dog uh, pet bowl station in both the large and small dog park as well as the wash stations. Um, bathrooms will be cleaned on a daily rotation just like the rest of the ones in the city. Um, garbage will be pulled. All those things um, will be the, with, up to the standard that we're doing across the, the rest of the parks in the city. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? I can go next, Brian, if that's okay. Um, so I have a, a lot to share. Um, I forget exactly what documents I had given you um, about the upcoming Harvest Festival, but I believe you all got this calendar. Um, so I'll just kind of go through a couple of the events on there. Um, 
So Harvest Festival, as you guys know, the way that we are able to do events now has drastically changed from how we would normally do Harvest Festival. Um, so for those of you that aren't aware, a typical Harvest Festival is a couple hour event that's held at the Stein Barn. We do like horse and carriage rides, face painting. There's like hundreds of people in the barn um, doing pumpkin decorating and all of that. Um, so this year we had to get a little bit more creative in how we're going to offer this to the community just due to social distancing reasons, obviously, um, and amounts of people that we could have gather. Um, so what started as an idea to just decorate a park and do kind of like a self-guided walkthrough of a park um, kind of morphed into this 15-day um, extravaganza of virtual contests and um, some in-person events, a lot of drive-through events um, that will be beginning next week, um, next Wednesday. Um, so Asman's going to pull up the, the web page for the event here. Um, this page, if you're not already familiar with, gives um, descriptions of all the events on this calendar, um, like a, a thorough kind of description of how to get involved and just like what each activity is about. Um, so this is really where we're trying to drive traffic um, for the community to understand this event and all that we're offering. Um, so I'd really appreciate it. Well, we can't obviously take volunteers right now. Um, if you guys just have family and friends that are in town or might want to participate, um, just to share this website. Um, we also have a Facebook page. We have an Instagram account that we've also been doing um, some publications and, and things through. Um, so please share those um, if you can or just like them. Um, anything really helps. Um, so next week, I'll let Brian touch on his kind of event that's at the community center next Wednesday. Um, but next Thursday, we're also doing one of the classic pieces of Harvest Festival is a free pumpkin and decorating. Um, so we're doing that instead of an in-person event. Obviously, we're doing a drive through. So we'll have um, next week kind of a drive through station. We're handing out these letters with the event and some coloring sheets and crossword puzzles and, and things like that. Um, also a free pumpkin, one per person with a craft face that you can take home and decorate. Um, and then kind of throughout the following weeks, we're doing a bunch of different like virtual crafts and contests like um, pumpkin carving, door decor. We're doing like a hidden pumpkin scavenger hunt um, with just a bunch of really great prizes, um, like really nice prizes. Like some of them are, you know, that we do like Gregory hydration packs, like hiking backpacks are worth like 80 bucks. We're doing like these really nice um, hydro flask water bottles, a bunch of different gift baskets, um, just with the hopes that good prizes will get more people um, involved. So that's kind of what I've been working on. Um, we decorated the building today. Um, so the building looks pretty cool. Um, and that's really where my efforts have been the last couple of weeks. Um, and then other than that, kind of backtracking, um, I know we haven't met in a really long time, um, but this summer we did run some outdoor summer camps. Um, we're really kind of, uh, I guess, constrained might not be the right word, but I'm going to use it, um, constrained in what we can offer just due to OHA and state guidelines. Um, for camps and youth programs. Um, I'm happy to talk to anyone about those kind of further if you have any questions and, and what we're able to offer. Um, and we're also currently not publishing an activity guide just due to the limited offerings that we have. Um, but everything that we are offering, we're pushing out on our ActiveNet software, our website, um, Facebook, et cetera. So yeah, <laughs> does anyone have any questions? I know that was kind of a lot. Okay. Yeah, Voss. <laughs> Not really a question. I just want to point out that Erica usually goes crazy during all these um, holiday seasons with putting on multitude of things. I think she's going doubly crazy trying to implement things that are just abnormal, if you want to call it that, and has done an outstanding job putting things together. We, we get comments, not daily, but almost daily, from citizens saying how they appreciate all the things online that Erica has and um, she mentioned the decor that we put together at the park building. Um, she did the inside of the building. If you look through the windows from Town Center Park, it looks really cool. And the park crew with Dustin and Tommy and the crew put together some really cool stuff up on the roof. 
Uh, if you look at, you know, is it Frankenstein? Is there yeah, there's like a 13 foot wide, 10 foot tall Frankenstein. On yeah, there. and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool looking. So <laughs> if you get the chance to go by there, probably it's better at night. Awesome. I can probably tell you that right now because she's there. Um, at night, it probably looks even better. But even in the daytime, it looks pretty cool. So if you get a chance to go down there, I, I would take a look. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions before I pass it to Brian? Cool. Thanks. Please share if you can. All So community center updates, um, much like everything else, uh, we've kind of been in an interesting holding pattern. Uh, since the middle of March, our community center has been closed to the public. Uh, so what that means is the majority of our programs have been canceled or not offered. Uh, but the, the good thing or the positive that's come out of that, we've been able to continue our home delivered meal program. Uh, so prior to COVID, uh, we had about 40 folks uh, that we were preparing home delivered meals for. Uh, at this point, we're doing 90 meals a day. Uh, that is a mix of home delivered meals uh, that we've been able to partner with Smart Transit. Uh, they're actually delivering to our home delivered meal clients. Uh, and then we got about 50 individuals uh, who used to come to the community center for lunch uh, that live in Creekside Woods, which is the apartment complex uh, right behind the center. Uh, so we've set up a, basically it's a back deck pickup. Uh, each group of five individuals has a, a 15 minute window when they can come and pick up their meal. Um, so we're still able to provide them with a nutritious meal. Uh, also gives our social worker an opportunity to touch base with them on a daily basis, just being sure that they're still doing well uh, and meet any needs they might have. Um, you know, things that we have been able to do, uh, we have moved our watercolor class uh, virtually. So for the last month or so, uh, we've been offering an intro to watercolors class uh, via Zoom. Uh, and then about six weeks ago, uh, we started back with in-person personal training and in-person small group exercise classes uh, at the park. So I know both for our clients as well as Brad Moore, a personal trainer, uh, being able to interact and do things in person ha has been a huge help. Uh, the other thing uh, I would like to mention from a, a program perspective that is part of the uh, Fall Harvest Fest that Erica mentioned, uh, next Wednesday on the 14th from 1 to 2.30 at the community center, uh, we're doing a drive-through ice cream social and craft pickup. Uh, for a lot of our seniors, uh, they have not been able to get out and about and socialize. So while it's a small thing, uh, it's something we're trying to do to engage with them. Uh, just an opportunity to say hi to, to folks. You know, pre-COVID, we saw five days a week. Um, and for some of them, this is going to be the first time we've seen them uh, in five months. So something kind of cool there. Uh, other things to point out. Uh, kind of just generally uh, speaking, uh, I've been continuing to work with the Korean War Memorial Foundation of Oregon. Uh, as you likely know, uh, there at Town Center Park, uh, we have our Korean War Memorial, uh, but that foundation has been working on fundraising uh, and has struck an agreement with the city for use of space. Uh, and we'll be starting the design process very soon to have a Korean War Memorial Interpretive Center uh, there at the Parks and Recreation Admin Office. So uh, if you come into that office area, Asaman's desk is there in the middle. Uh, the space to the left is your face in her desk, which is uh, often empty, uh, will be a small interpretive center for uh, Oregon Korean War Memorial veterans. Uh, and finally, uh, the city has been working on an arts, culture, and heritage strategy. Uh, that particular document, document, excuse me, will be available for public comment uh, beginning tomorrow. Uh, so if you go to the city's website, you'll be able to access that and provide comments. Uh, and that comment period uh, runs from tomorrow until October 20th. Uh, so if you would like to see what the city's vision for arts, culture, heritage uh, might be, uh, definitely uh, a tie in to our Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, but everything from performing arts to uh, public art to a number of programs that could be offered uh, it's all there in that strategy. Uh, so I do encourage you to spend some time, take a look at it and provide any public comment uh, as you see fit. Great. 
I have no question. I just wanted to point out that even though Brian's uh, building is closed, uh, he pointed out the meals and everything. His entire staff down there, Janice with her cooking, Brittany, Brenda, they help with all the meal deliveries. Um, amazing group. Uh, and Brian leads that group really well, but they are really chipping in. You just think the building's closed and maybe they're not doing much. So and again, just like Erica and other people, they're doing actually probably more, uh, which is hard to do, but they are, I mean, they, I think they were painting they, the building, not just painting pictures, the building um, and the uh, meals and everything else, um, just doing things that are, good for the community. I mean, uh, out of their area of expertise maybe, but good for the community. So um, if you have a chance to tell them, thank you, they're doing an outstanding job. Thank you both very much. I've been paying attention. I really, this is Kate, really appreciate both of you, what you've done for the community. And, and to Mike's point, once we do reopen, I, I would encourage everyone to, to come by the center because we have taken this opportunity to uh, do some upgrades. I got new flooring in the lobby uh, and in the hallway, and Mike is correct. Uh, we did have our two admin staff uh, who literally painted the entire inside of the community center uh, with the exception of things that are eight feet and taller, uh, but that's a whole different OSHA question or comment. But uh, yeah, they have uh, painted the entire community center inside. So uh, we're being sure that uh, our staff is finding new things and honing new skills and Doing the best we can. Great. Anything else? Awesome. On we have um, the next. What's on the next on the the agenda there? You will. Um, so it looks like the only thing we have left is the board comments. I, I have a, a comment, if, if, um, if I may. Um, I just uh, wanted to bring up, I, I sent an email to Parks and Rec's Brian and, and Mike earlier, a couple weeks ago, with regards to some, um, so some dog uh, owner behavior on the in the park in Memorial Park, and I uh, I don't know if that's up for discussion or if that's um, for another time. But I wanted to bring it up to everybody's attention that there's a it's it's been discussed over social media quite a bit and garnered some um, uh, it's 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 drug up some turmoil. This is and it's a sort of a repeat um, situation where. Um, one person has, has multiple times brought their dogs off leash um, to the on leash area and a little dog recently was attacked and apparently not the first time one dog um, has and and uh, they came back and reported it on a local community page Wilsonville which um, you know tipped off multiple conversations and I happened to see it and then I jumped in and realized I was one of those persons that were um, that was impacted with my dog on leash um although not attacked it was just more of a concern and and uh, the person was sort of emboldened to continue as he was and, and rebuff anything uh, mandating the rules in the park so i bring that to everybody's attention because it's kind of a, a reminder <laughs> when we have we live in a place where there's so much noise and and breaking of the rules going on and you know nobody's I don't know if uh, I just wanted to bring it out to discussion if anybody had any comments to make on it. I, I could tell you from a staff level that we've been dealing with that extensively. I'm Erica, Brian, Osamont, and um, Dustin and I have been, Osamont gets most of the phone calls, unfortunately for her, but um, we do have, I wouldn't say extraordinary amount, but we do have regular calls with off leash dogs, mainly at Memorial. We have it at Town Center Park once in a while. Erica's posted on Facebook the rules and how important it is to keep your dog on leash and look after your pet. Uh, we have posted signs down there as far as, you know, 
put your dog on a leash. Uh, we've contacted uh, the police chief just recently and our code enforcement officer, and we're trying to maybe get a handle on who would be the person responsible for kind of, I guess, making those people responsible if they're breaking the rules. Um, so we, we're on it. Uh, we don't have an exact science or a perfect answer, but we're trying to figure out the best way to approach that. Uh, the park crew tries to remind people, but again, they're not the police. That's not their job. Um, so we're trying to, you know, figure out exactly the best way to approach this. Um, but we understand it is an issue because again, Osman gets a, a few calls quite regularly. Dustin might, Dustin might input, but I don't know. But. Yeah. So I, we, we routinely, you know, obviously Osman takes calls, but we also just get, get, you know, approached in the park that there's, there's some issues and, and the team does try to, you know, dispatch as, as they can and, and make contact. But often by the time we, we hear about it or find out about it, it's, it's long over and that person has, has left the park. So we've had a tough time just, you know, even, even making contact and trying to just have that initial conversation with somebody on a team level. It, it's, it, it presents a challenge for us for sure. Yeah. And I don't know if at other um, parks, Mar um, um, Mike, with your experience um, with parks all across the nation, like how do they, is it kind of an ongoing issue in, uh, you know, situation nationwide, would you say? It or? is. And, uh, you know, a lot of parks are, or I, maybe it's bigger communities, they have park rangers. Uh, we don't have park rangers who are out there and about uh, doing those kind of researches and, and uh, trying to enforce the rules. Um, you know, we don't, we don't have that because we don't have 50 parks here. A lot of bigger cities have park rangers, but we don't have that. So, Again, we, we, we're, we're trying to enforce the rules or regulate the rules with, with our police. And the police are doing a great job. They're down there on their bicycles. Um, you know, the, the police chief, uh, he, he's on top of things. But it's like Dustin just said, sometimes you have to be there. It's almost like catching a criminal in the act. You have to be there when something happens. And it's almost just coincidence if you happen to be there. Uh, but and by the time the get there, or the code enforcement officer, or a park crew get there, the 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 person who was negligent negligent as far as abiding by the rules is gone. Um, so again, it's it's a work in progress, but we're trying. So. Right, and unfortunately, they I think they they know that <laughs> pattern, unfortunately, and and I guess uh, the only concern I would have in the bigger picture scheme of things is when you get a, a rally of multiple you know, uh, if there's a repeat offender and it's ongoing, my, my biggest concern is, is the, it's kind of like the, um, the defensive driver or the, or the, you know, the car carjacking and stuff. People get so ticked off. They have to sit in line so much. And then you, there's violence. People take things into their own hands. They, 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 social media is quick and impatient and the behavior is locally. And that's, that's all I would say out there. Is, and I, I think it's great. You're doing, what you can is just uh, this is just a little bit of concern of the the, the sentiment that was going on there. Yeah. Well, uh, Dustin I and I talk it. about it all the time, and we always talk about we can always do better, which you can always do better. Um, but I, I think as far as the the dog issue goes, it's it's everywhere. It's in other parks. Um, yeah. And again, we're trying to get a hold of it and trying to get to get a stranglehold if you can. But it's usually just a select few, just like other things that happen. Most dog owners in Wilsonville, I've, t I've been in other cities, they are crazy great. Uh, they, they pick up after their pets. Uh, they put their pets on the leash. They're really good in Wilsonville. And like I said, I've been in other communities that aren't so much, but there's just a few people who think the rules don't apply. And we're trying to do the best we can. Hey, Thank hey, you. Mike, I have a, I have a question about that I haven't been to this new uh, dog park, but, um, and I gotta admit, I kind of gave up on dog parks a while ago, just for all the reasons <laughs> everybody's been talking about, because I have a little dog and people uh, don't seem to be too respectful of little dogs unless you're in a little dog park. But uh, do you have like cameras uh, overseeing this? Um, and also is something like a key card? I know that's kind of probably expensive to implement, but, um, because you would have a gate to get in, right? If you could buzz in, at least you'd have a some sort of record of 
the people that are in or out at a certain time. And at least if things come and go, at least you can trace it or something. If there's like a mauling or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, we, we don't have that at the dog parks right now. And I don't know how much that would cost or yeah. what that would, what would that would look like. And, and as far as cameras, we, we have a few cameras, but Dustin, you can chip in here, but we don't have cameras everywhere because we don't have the infrastructure everywhere, but. Dustin, yeah, that's, that's exactly in. right. I mean, at this time, like we don't have the, the fiber pulled down to the, you know, the dog park to, to mm -hmm. set something like that up. Um, you know, as far as the, uh, the, the small dog mentality. Uh, we have split the two areas up. There's a trail that divides the small dog and the large dog park now. Um, the small dog park is actually slightly larger than it was in its original location. Um, it's bigger now. And it has all the same, um, same amenities, same shelters, same benches. So it should be um, just as friendly for a small dog user as it is for a large dog user. And we actually went rounds on what to call the play areas for the dogs. And I think we settled on large and active and small and or passive. So that kind of maybe helps small dog owners have a, have a spot to go. Well, I'll try it out. I thought Kodak was gonna chip him, but he didn't say anything to say, so. <laughs> Sounds like both your dogs, Erica's dog and your dog, were just uh, they were feeling the. <laughs> and and they actually get along <laughs> really well air. together too. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. Anybody else have any comments? Um, uh, nope. I don't have any comments. Uh, well, I guess I do. I've been enjoying the community garden this summer. It's been great. Um, learned a lot of things, learned that I'm not a very good grower. <laughs> um, and somebody stole my, uh, my gourd and I'm kind of upset about it. <laughs> they stole your what? I had a birdhouse gourd and somebody stole it. It was like one of the, oh, no. the few things that was actually growing well. And, um, I was really looking forward to trying it. But it's okay. Nice. It, you know, it could have been a gopher too. I mean, there's there's other culprits. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> if we don't have any other comments or from from anyone, um, shall we make this uh, meeting adjourned this evening? Um, I guess I will make it adjourned. If, if we're all in favor, I'll call the meeting adjourned. We're all kind of quiet. A great evening. Thank you all for coming tonight. Appreciate you. Have a good week, guys. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh.